Thank you for auditing the Always Positive New Music Review Show, hosted by a French professor who's going to be reviewing his fourth album in four days. It's part of my EP wiki. I'm trying to get to a bunch of EPs that came out. I'm going to be reviewing the album Pain Provided Profit by Conway the Machine and Jay Skies. There is so much good rap. <laughs> coming out of Buffalo. There are so many good rappers coming out of Buffalo that it's actually possible to sleep on them. So, okay, I understand. Buffalo is not Atlanta. It's not LA. It's not New York in terms of its population base. But in terms of its uh, rappers per capita, uh, it might be the highest. It's unbelievable. I mean, just as an example, Love the Genius is this amazing rap uh, rapper who... I've only heard in features and I've never listened to any one of her albums just like all the way through. <clears throat> and obviously I know Conway the Machine. He's one of my favorite rappers alive. Uh, maybe one of my favorite rappers ever. You know, time will tell. Uh, <laughs> but then this album is with someone named Jay Skies. And, and Jay Skies actually reached out to me on DM uh, in Instagram and sort of sent me some of his stuff. And I was sort of vaguely aware of him. I'd seen his name some places. And I was like, Jesus, this is great. <laughs> this is a really good rap artist. How, how did I... I think he's had like seven projects since I started this channel. There's just too much good stuff. There's too much good stuff coming out. You know, I, part of my channel, it, it's unintentional. I never intended to have this channel spend so much time with underground rap music and this sort of invisible revolution, an invisible renaissance that's going on. Um, but I'm just compelled by the level of quality and material that's coming out. So I, I was sleeping on Jay Skies. He had to wake me up himself. And, and, you know, I don't know what it is about Buffalo. You know, I don't know if it's the socioeconomic conditions. I don't know if it's the fact that, I mean, there is something to the idea that, that uh, living in very cold weather sharpens your mind. I know whenever I'm walking around with my kids and there'll be a sharp wind and you just feel, you just want to die. It's so cold. And I'll just tell them, you feel that, kids? That's your intellect being sharpened by the forces. That's the kind of thing I say as a dad. So here we have these two rappers coming together. And it's interesting because it's all in the drum work label, which is Conway the Machine's uh, label. I, my main issue with Conway over the past couple of years since I've realized that he's one of my favorite rappers is that there is, a, I think, a fair amount of inconsistency. I mean, his, his first album released under drum work, was, was good, but it wasn't amazing, and God Don't Make Mistakes was amazing, and so, sort of back and forth. But I think this is much more on that amazing scale of things. And I think there's something nice about him having a collaborator who's not in Griselda. I really like Griselda, but there's obviously a tension between the three, and that, that, that works to their advantage, I guess between the four if we include the producer, Derringer. It's to their advantage that there's this kind of tension, who's the best, who's going to be the best, you know. Uh, whereas this, uh, it feels as though the hierarchy is fairly clear. You know, Conway is the bigger star, and Jay Skies uh, is probably, probably equal talent, but uh, not as much star power. So I think because of that, there's a sort of ease. And maybe these guys are just better friends, I don't know. Or maybe the fact that, that Jay Skies is on Conway's label means that Conway is sort of giving him uh, more space. But there's a back and forth to this album, which you just don't hear on many rap albums. I mean, not even like on, you know, like like a truly great uh, collaborative album of the last couple of years, you know, the, the Ransom and Rome Streets album. Even that album, I don't think has as easy back and forth as this. This just feels like a couple of guys just rapping, passing back and forth, talking about what they're talking about. So let me give you an example of what it sounds like. Click on the bird of paradise uh, leaf up above there for the song metallic fives i will say my number one complaint about this album is that the title promises something that the product does not deliver so the title pain provided profit seems to be talking about the sort of faustian bargain it's not even a faustian bargain because it's not like people who are born into misery choose it <laughs> but the uh, unintended positive consequence of being born in a terrible situation is you can sometimes turn that terrible situation into something profitable which is very interesting which conway has talked about on other rhymes which griselda does talk about which is my favorite thing that that this underground invisible renaissance is doing where they're not just talking about selling drugs but they're talking about the consequences of living in a place where you would sell drugs so this album doesn't quite deliver on that but it's actually okay because it's just a very light album so metallic fives it's got what i call a da doom doom cack beat which is one of my favorite kinds of beats a da doom doom cack da doom doom cack da doom doom cack 
you know, I, I think Rizzo really is the guy who, who figured out how to use these beats the best. Um, it's just a good basis. Good woozy synthesizers, a little bit out of tune, a little bit detuned. This is all produced by someone named Real Six. I had not heard of any of the producers on this album. I don't know where they find them. They come out of the woodworks. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they're all from where they're from. Um, but just really the, the, the level of, of rhyming on this whole EP, it's seriously just do yourself a favor, get Lyric Genius, get some Lyric Source, and just read them along because it's really, really impressive. Look, J. Ski's my accomplice, and we leave evidence. A trail of blood on the floor, a couple set of prints. I'm heaven sent. God of the grimy, this is the New Testament. Perfection been reflected on my record since I stepped in this shit. Talk to him. Bunch of six figures cars parked at my residence. All this great, like, syllable work. Uh, rhythmic work with these words, you know, look, J. Ski's my accomplice as we leave evidence, just such, uh, the word is flow, right? You know, you know, flow is when you're able to rhyme, but also how you're able to deliver words with proper emphasis on different syllables, and how you're able to put these things all together, and rhyme creates flow, because rhyme creates rhythm, because when you hear accomplice, evidence, uh, set of prints, like that creates a certain rhythm in your head, and that's what makes Conway so good. He has I don't know, what what is it the kids say, God level flow? He does, he does. He, I mean, this is like, what's the difference between Biggie and someone who's not a great rapper? It's flow, and that's really what Conway has. And when he's on, his flow is just untouchable. And then this great back and forth. And then we have Jay Skies on here. And and <laughs> my favorite thing about Jay Skies, and this I, I got from the, the stuff that he sent me over, over the years, over the last year, he's not trying to be anything, I don't think. I think even though he he's he's running with you know the the Buffalo crew who's sort of you know very tough and sort of crime centric, I get the sense that Jay Skies is a guy who's happy to be rapping, who's happy to have enough money to care for his family, and really really likes buying sneakers. That's that's his thing, and that is a level of honesty which I really appreciate, which is usually reserved for, you know, Open Mic Eagle or Rap Ferreira, you know, where you just like, I watch a lot of anime. Like, if that's the truth, that's the truth. And so if Jay Skies' truth is not talking about VVSs and Mercilagos and all that, if his truth is really liking sneakers, like, I don't collect sneakers, um, but I'm a collector, you know. I collect music memorabilia, I collect Chewbacca, I collect all sorts of, I, I collect Krusty the Clown memorabilia, I collect hip hop memorabilia, I'm, I'm a collector, so I know the collector's mindset. So when I hear him <laughs> rhyming about collecting sneakers, I know that sneaker heads are hearing this and go, oh man, oh man, I'm crossing borderlines, rocking metallic Jordan 5s, you know, this means something to somebody. Meteoric's how I describe my sort of rise, you know? So he's not just making these call-outs, he's also doing that great flow thing. Metallic Jordan 5's describe my sort of rise, great assonance and you know assonance is when you rhyme vowel sounds so ives rives ribe you know meteoric italic so that's actually uh the the the, the rhyming of the consonants really just great work and it's just kind of just back and forth you know they create in fire neanderthals historic times so hot open wound get cauterized i've been focused on my target target like an archer's eyes trying to go from skirt skate skirt steak to porterhouse inside my portion size you know like a lot of this album is about sort of coming up about making it shit maybe i'm wrong Maybe it is about pain provided profit. You know what it is? It's a lot about the provided profit bit, but it's not a lot about pain, which might be okay. Maybe the, maybe the market is flooded with rappers talking about the trauma of the hood right now. Maybe there's too much of that. There is about um, you know providing uh, providing profit. So I just love this idea of discussing rising up from skirt steak to porterhouse. Now I personally don't care for steak. I'm not a big fan of steak in general. Any other kind of luxury food I will go for over law, over over steak. But still, I get his point. You know, skirt steak is cheap, porterhouse is not. Then later he says, this is the separation of the Jordan mids and the Jordan highs. And this is as good of a point as any to tell you my story about when I was a sneakerhead for one, one week in 1997. 1997 during the finals Jordan I think it I think that was the finals against against Salt Lake I think that was just I mean against Utah just that insane finals and I was so moved and I was playing a lot of basketball back then I was like I'm going to do the most extravagant thing I could possibly do <laughs> and I went down and I had 
got three $50 bills and I went down to the Foot Locker in the Watertown Mall or maybe the Arsenal Mall, one of the two, somewhere in Watertown, Massachusetts. And I went to the Foot Locker and, and, and I took $150 and I put the cash down and I bought a pair of red and black Air Jordan 13s with the, with the little like reflective thing on there and the little holographic thing. Now I did wear them, I would wear them, but the problem is I'm 6'1", so I'm not short. But that's all I got going for me in my basketball game. I'm not fast, I don't jump high, and my shot is okay. So all I have for me is that I'm a little bit taller than some people. So th the thing is, I didn't wear the shoes very often <laughs> because I felt like such a buster being on a basketball court wearing Jordans and being as bad as I was that I basically just wore my Ewings. <laughs> If you don't know Ewings, you bought those at like Payless or whatever. Like like they were like low 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 cut low top Ewings. Really sweet shoes actually. I really like them. Um, but yeah. So anyways, um, and then I convinced my dad to buy Rodmans. My dad bought Rodmans, which he called Rudmans. And so we had this like cool whole thing going on. Um, I ended up giving those Air Jordan 13s to my nephew. And it's one of the great sources of anxiety in my life because I love my nephew, but he's not very talkative. And I don't, if he appreciates them and loves them, then I want him to have them. But if he just thinks, oh, I don't know, and he's just ready to throw them away at any time, I want to be like, just make sure you give them back to me if you don't care about them. But I'm not comfortable enough asking him that because that's a little bit like, you know, taking back a gift that you gave him. So I don't know. I've talked a lot about sneakers, but listen, if you're going to listen to this album, you're going to listen to a lot about sneakers. It's a lot of what it's, a lot of what it's about. God damn, those are great sneakers though. Damn, red and black. How did I have such good taste? Like I've looked at all the Jordans. Besides Air Jordan 1, that's the second best Jordan. Anyways. So that's an example of what the album's like. Great back and forth, amazing rhyming from both of them. The beats on this album are good. They're really like great, you know, like they're not whatever, Derringer or Conductor or, or Alchemist level. Um, but at the same time, like they're not distractingly bad. Only one beat, what I say, is kind of like, nah, it doesn't quite hold up for the whole song, but we'll get there. So gonna go through the rest of the album a little bit quicker here. It starts off with a track called Cocaine Paste. I don't know why it's called that. Produced by Grey Matter, who's producing a lot of this. Starts off speaking to basketball with Kobe Bryant being interviewed. You know, why aren't you smiling? You're up to nothing. Job's not finished. And why aren't you smiling? Job's not finished. Is the job finished? Uh, then some gunshots, cool kind of underwater beat, lazy beat behind the, like the voice is kind of cool with the drums. It's kind of a sliding flow to Conway here and then <laughs> Jay Skis. It's soon going to be St. Patrick's Day. He's talking about Air Force Ones. Look, St. Patrick's Day, one lows. I sham rocked it. Sne like he just has a sneaker problem. My sneaker problem got bands hopping right up to my pants pocket. The easy ones. I copped the tan off from Dusty Dunk Highs. They had the tan and brown Asics. I just, I kind of wish I was a sneaker head because I would just love this so much. Um, and then uh, just great back and forth again between these two guys. I don't know what it is. I don't know why their why their uh, um, flow is so not. You know, like I just reviewed uh, the last last album I reviewed was Makami and the God Fahim, and it's kind of similar. It's sort of that Ghostface Raekwon level of interchange. You know, which is different than. That's what's funny is that the, the Wu-Tang dynamic is not the same as the Ghostface and Raekwon dynamic. Like the Ghostface and Raekwon dynamic is like two roughly equals who interchange and go back. Whereas the Wu-Tang aesthetic, which is what I think is what Griselda is, is like <laughs> nine people trying to kill each other through rhymes. Just constantly. Okay, eight people on the Old Dirty Bastard just doing whatever the hell he was doing. But you know, like, so anyways, great, great track. Uh, then we get to the stamp and talk fives in the song Stefan Diggs too. I live in Western New York, so I'm in favor of any Bills reference. Cool double hi-hat beat, muted trumpet, weird percussion. Conway makes a couple of references to uh, touring in, in Copenhagen and later in Amsterdam. And I happen to follow a little bit of the, of the Griselda stuff on Reddit. And I guess uh, West Side Gun had a tour and he had to cancel... Uh, I guess he's very, like, um, defensive. So, like, he just would block anybody who would talk about the show being canceled. And But Conway stepped in and did the shows. And personally, personally, I'd take that trade. I would, I would rather see Conway than, than West Side Gun in concert. I mean, I'd rather see all of them, but they don't come to Rochester. <laughs> Why? 
Why? Why did they cancel their show in Rochester? It's like an hour away. It, it's okay, an hour and a half. Go to Copenhagen. <laughs> come, come to Rochester. I'll do a video about the show. I'll, I'll be saying, I'll, be, do, 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 I'll, I'll do it all. Anyways. Um, kind of a different flow from skis here. A little bit more breathless. Really nice here. More rapping about sneakers. La Chop is the next song. Another one uh, with Grey Matter. It's cool kind of singing in the beginning. Jay Skis is also able, able to sort of sing and make choruses, which is nice. Provides a little bit of variation here. A uh, very kind of dusty beat kicks in. Just great back and forth again between the two. Um, one of the better sports lines, it sucks when you Tom Brady and you let a Eli Manning defeat you. Um, I am from New England, so although I support the Buffalo Bills, you know, I'm also a Patriots fan, which is messed up. You can't, you can't be both, but you can be if you've lived my life. I'm a fan of both teams. I, it's okay, so the thing is I pissed everybody off. So now all the Buffalo fans are like, you can't do that. And I'm sorry. And all the Boston fans are like, oh, buddy, you got to pick a team in the AFC, buddy. I don't have to. I like both teams. And I personally appreciate Tom Brady because we're the same age. Um, but that's just a great line. <laughs> like, it is one of the great things. Like, how did he get beat by that doofus twice? It's terrible. Um, great lyrics, too, about, like, making sure that you're supporting your family. Like, they continue the theme. So Conway has got to be willing to do what it takes. I'm just trying to fill another safe, make sure my two sons and my mother are straight. And then Jay Skis comes in. I had plans on becoming great. Even continues the rhyme scheme. Make sure that everyone inside my circumference ate. My father died young. I want to see my mother live to touch 108. Great. Just great sort of uh, back and forth flow, like I'm saying, this real, this real uh, uh, charisma between them. Speaking of charisma, they're just chilling in the sun. That's Bo and Toby. I think I think Toby is Conway and Bo is Jay Skis in that particular pairing over there. <clears throat> so, uh, have you smashed the like bucket yet? Have you subscribed to Professor Sky? Because you, you want if, you, if you're into this, this is what I do. Next song is called Immaculate Reception. Another nice kind of beat in the pocket. Uh, this one's produced by Zulu. This is one of the better beats. And here. Just Jay Skis is on fire. Like, how was I sleeping on him? This verse is insane. <laughs> it's so good. Bro, they gotta be gassing him. Now, I listened to other rappers' verses like, bro, they gotta be gassing him. I gave a fuck at one point, but now I'm honestly abstinent. Because if you break down and totally with analysis, nobody's snapping harder since Lil John went rapper <laughs> shit. Look, them rappers mid-level just like assistant management. My flame got ignited. I keep fanning it and fanning it. You know, like like alliteration and just playful and funny and interesting. You know, rappers mid-level like assistant management. That's awesome. By the way, I was once an assistant manager of Blockbuster Video. It's true. The, sa the same time when I was buying Jordans, I was an assistant manager at Blockbuster Video in Newton, Massachusetts. I made uh, $6.25 an hour <laughs> for being an assistant manager. I was like in charge of the store. Just keeps on going. This is a Jay Ski song where Conway the Machine plays the West Side Gun Roll of just coming on at the end and just being like, Yeah, this is great. We're just getting started, but you're over. Drum work is awesome. We're great. We're super great. How much more time is left? 30 seconds. Okay. We're, we're awesome. Killing, killing y'all. Doop, de doop, doop, de doop. Next song is called Promise. Cool kind of shuffling drum beat. Uh, uplifting, there's kind of a sweetness to this song, again referencing Amsterdam, uh, sort of a hard jail lyric from Conway, gangster till they slam the gavel, F the judge, the DEA, and what have you, give me a hundred years if you feel you have to, I'm just as solid as they come, like, <laughs> give me a hundred years if you feel you have to, that's a funny way to talk to the authorities, another great verse from JJ about making it, and then finally we get to the final song, which is the, the produced by Grey Matter, who in general his beats have been good here, my only issue is this is a posse cut. And the problem is that with a posse cut, you need a beat that can sustain. It's like there's a weight. It's like a like there's a lot of snow outside, you know, Western New York. And like branches have to sustain a certain amount of weight. And, and posse cuts, like that's why, you know, scenario will probably never be topped. Even a great posse cut, you know, like uh, Impossible by Wu-Tang Clan. Even that, I think, the beat is not quite strong enough to sustain all the voices. So I don't think, even though this is a good beat, and every verse on here is good, I don't think the beat is quite strong enough to sustain all the voices. But what do I know? I'm just some guy who's looking at his dog sleeping in the sun. 
Um, what I do like about this is that this has that great competition because every verse I hear, I go up. Oh, this 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 is the verse of the song. Love the genius comes on. I just talked about her, or as I used to call her, Seven X the genius. Um, she's just great. Just it's the thing is, is that often female rappers are pigeonholed as having to be one way or another, and. There's two female rappers who are not pigeonholed in either, and they're both from Buffalo. Like, that's just bizarre that there's so few female rappers out there who are free of this patriarchically in, you know, uh, instilled box, and that they both come from a city with a population of under a million. It's awesome. But, and you think Love the Genius is the best verse, and then Jay Ski's verse comes in, and actually, no, that's the best verse. And then there's a little bit of singing, and then Conway's doing a triplet flow. Like, what's he hanging out in Atlanta? And then it closes with some guy from Baltimore called Sk Da Kingi, and which is pretty good as well. So the whole thing is super strong. So, anyways, I gotta go do an interview with Notre Dame. Notre Dame College Radio wants me to talk to them, so I'm gonna go do an interview, which makes sense because we talked about the St. Patrick's Day ones, the Air Force ones. So go buy some sneakers and uh, uh, tune in tomorrow. I'm going to talk about some Brazilian rap. I'm going from super local to super not. There's the camera.